point. All right, so that's one thing that kind of confuses things a little bit when we think about the accounting equation is that we have the assets on one side, liabilities and equity. People usually get hung up on equity because we like equity and it's on the same side as the liabilities and finance people would like to reformat the equation to assets minus liabilities, but that's not in the format that we want to do for data input because it's not representing the two sides of the coin as this format of the equation basically does. All right, that's the layout. Now, the other problem we have is that we'd like to get more detail about the assets. So if I go over here to the assets, notice we have at a minimum on the balance sheet, current assets and fixed assets. So now we have this situation of wanting to break out the assets into multiple categories. Now, if we had a debit and credit format, we usually make something called a trial balance, which is in a vertical system. And that's why we only have two columns, which would be basically, you know, debits and then credits in essence, right? And then we have, and then we have our columns of our, of our trial balance. But when we have the accounting equation, I want to see the equation horizontally, which is another problem from a data input standpoint, because you have to come up with a worksheet that is this long, like wide worksheet so we can see the accounting equation. So that's why logistically it's a little bit easier to convert to debits and credits. But here we want to focus in on the accounting equation to get it conceptually this way. All right. So we have current assets, which represent assets that are going to be consumed relatively recently, possibly in another year, cash, accounts receivable, possibly inventory, and then fixed assets, which could be called property, plants, and equipment, P, P, and E. For example, those are things like property, plants, and equipment that we're going to be using over a long period of time furniture and equipment and so on. And then on the liability side, we could have a similar, now we could also have other assets as well, but on the liability side, we also have current assets, those assets that are going to be due within a year's time frame. And then we could have long-term assets such as long-term loans that we're going to have to pay out past a year. So we let, we want to break those two things out. And then on the equity side it has its own problem. Now you might be asking, by the way, in this accounting equation, you might be asking like, where, where's the income statement, right? So the accounting equation is assets equal liabilities plus equity, but that's the balance sheet. That's defined as the balance sheet, one of our major two financial statements, not including the statement of cash flows because it's kind of a, a rework in essence, kind of like of the income statement on the cash basis. So we, we're not gonna get into that right now. If you look at the two major financial statements, balance sheet income statement, the accounting equation is clearly represented by the balance sheet. Where's the income statement? Well, it's part of the equity. That's the other thing that gets a little confusing. This is what often messes people up from the accounting system, whether using debits and credits or the accounting equation, because really the income statement is taking the equity, 